Slowing down means finding a balance in your life, physical, mental, your social life, work, financial, family, etc. But reaching this balance isn't always easy. I have learned that this is a learning process, kind of like a continuous journey. Maybe some weeks I tip the skills a bit too much into one direction and I start to feel tired and overwhelmed even if I'm getting enough sleep. Or on the other side of the spectrum, I might start to feel a little bored and restless. Balance can also be a personal thing, like a unique perspective to ourselves that we can all practice with and get better at. After burning out completely in 2017, I am now happy to say that I have learned a thing or two when it comes to leading a more balanced life. So today I want to share with you five tips to help you create more balance in your life. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe and follow along. And before we begin, I quickly want to thank Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an awesome online learning platform where you can watch thousands of different classes on all kinds of different topics. Through their classes, I have learned about copywriting, web design, but also gardening and house plants, journaling, art, creativity, playing the guitar, videography, just so many things. And Skillshare has many classes that have to do with slowing down and relaxing, such as Iwa Rose's class that I loved called Slow Drawing, Slow Living. I just loved making these doodles. It's a great way of slowing down and just letting your creativity flow. I'm a big fan of coral lately, so I have been making a lot of things in coral. As a video creator with absolutely no prior experience with making videos, <laughs> Skillshare has definitely helped me not only in my personal life, but also in my professional life. So whether you just want to explore your creativity, try something new, try out a new hobby, or you would like to explore career options or learn new skills to better your work, I highly recommend checking them out. And the first thousand people to click my link in the description box will get a one month free trial. So you can try them out completely for free and if you don't like it, then you can cancel your plan within that first month and you will be charged. So highly recommend checking them out if you want to learn something new and you can start today. The number one thing that I've learned about balance is that it is not some kind of fixed state that you can get to and then have your life always be in balance. It's more like a continuous dynamic process. I used to think that if I could just fine tune all the different aspects of my life, then I could get it to be and stay in balance. But that's not really how it works. Life is always changing and evolving. It throws us curveballs. We grow older, our priorities might shift. So to think that we could get our life perfectly in balance is both unrealistic and luckily also unnecessary. So instead, what you could do is try and improve your resilience so that life doesn't knock you off your feet as easily. And then being able to notice subtle changes and make adjustments as you go on a daily basis, like bamboo trees that stand for balance and strength. Because they are not rigid, they move along with the wind. And because of this, they don't break. If we can be a bit more flexible and resilient, we can handle stress more easily, feel more positive and optimistic, and also be more equipped to deal with whatever life throws at us. So what I do now, instead of just trying to control everything and getting everything to stay perfectly in balance, is I practice tuning in with myself and making adjustments as I go through life. If I feel tired or overwhelmed, then I will prioritize rest and self-care for a while. If I start to feel stagnant and uninspired, I will prioritize physical exercise and new experiences. If I feel not so connected, I will spend more time with friends and family. So how do we build resilience? Here are a few things you can do. Practice positive thinking. We cannot control everything, but we can control how we respond to things. So try and look on the bright side as much as possible and make the most out of any situation. Another great way is to journal to try and process the things that you are going through. Another really good one is to have a support system, and this can either be online or offline or both. 
so that you have some people in your life who understand what you're going through. Really important one, positive self-talk. I talk about this all the time. Try not to put yourself down in your head because that's not serving anyone and show yourself some kindness, compassion, and empathy. And of course, self-care, which I will talk about more later on in the video. If you can one, build resilience, and two, be able to notice changes in life and make adjustments as you go through it, then your balance will improve a thousandfold. And this is easily one of the best life skills that I have learned and practiced with in the recent years. Let's talk about work-life balance next. And this can also be school life or housework life balance next. I personally know what it's like when your work-life balance is completely out of whack. So here are some things I do to try and keep good work-life balance. The most important thing I think is to know your limits and set boundaries. Know where your line in the sand is that says to here and no further and try not to cross it if you can help it. Find a way to create some separation between work and free time. So either find a way to enjoy your commute if you're going home and to kind of turn off your work mind, or if you work from home to tidy up your work stuff, get it out of the way, and perhaps go for a short walk or take a shower or meditate for a few minutes. Try and set a hard deadline for when you want to stop working at the end of the day, and also try and get a real lunch break if you can away from your laptop or your workspace. If at all possible, try logging out of your work stuff on your phone outside of work hours so that you're not constantly reminded of all of that work stuff through messages and emails. I do want to say that I completely acknowledge that this is easier for me to talk about because I'm self-employed and I work from home. I know this uh, back when I was working a corporate job, things were very different. And even then my job was probably a lot cushier than most jobs out there. So I totally acknowledge this difference. And honestly, I wish everyone had the opportunity to create a good work-life balance. At the same time, being self-employed, being responsible for my own paycheck and working from home presents its own kind of issues when it comes to work-life balance. So I, this is something that I'm also still practicing with. It just also really depends on the kind of job you have and the kind of freedom you have to make changes. So my advice would be to focus on the things that you do have control over, make little changes and adjustments here and there because these things do add up and little goes a long way. Another important part of leading a balanced life, I think, is having a balanced view of yourself. So that means finding a kind of self-esteem that is based on who you are as a complete whole package. So this means building confidence and self-esteem, knowing who you are as a person. I've made a whole in-depth video about this a while back, so I will leave that video for you in the description box in case you want to check it out. Having a balanced view of yourself means noticing and accepting the way you are, uh, both the traits that you think are good and the things that you think are bad, knowing all of your strengths and weaknesses and seeing them all together as kind of the whole package that makes up you. So try and embrace what makes you unique. Maybe you have some quirky things that you don't particularly like. For example, for me, crying at every single emotional cue that has ever existed in the history of mankind. <laughs> But these things are what make you uniquely you, and they're a part of you. Accept what you cannot change about yourself and know that these are also what make you you. And so even these things are valuable. I would also recommend to write down your strengths and talents and abilities and make sure you're proud of them. Another really important thing that I've learned from my burnout is learning to manage my stress levels better and deal with my emotions. We hear all the time that we need to avoid stress, that stress is bad for us. And honestly, just the fact that stress is unhealthy made me stressed so much about being stressed. <laughs> so let's let that go for a second because stress is a natural part of life. It's always going to be there every once in a while and we probably cannot avoid feeling stressed sometimes. So it's more about how we choose to deal with it and what our attitude towards stress can be. Basically, you wanna try and not let it overwhelm you. So if there is something that is making you feel stressed, for example, when your schedule is over 
scheduled, then this is something that you can change. You can perhaps schedule a bit more free time and make sure you don't get so overwhelmed. So there are things that you can do to prevent it. But if you do end up feeling stressed, then these are some things that you can do. Try and deal with it in a mindful way, which means acknowledging and accepting the fact that you feel stressed, but not clinging to it, just letting it go by like a cloud in the sky. <laughs> that rhymes. So you are not the stressful cloud, you are the big, blue sky so feelings come and go take a five minute mental break whenever you can and whenever you need it i used to deeply underestimate the value of these five minute breaks because i thought how much can that do but honestly i feel so much more refreshed afterwards sometimes i really feel like i've had a cup of coffee so try and go in another room put your phone away close your eyes take a deep breath just for five minutes and if you are at work and there is no place to do that, just do what I did. <laughs> just take a bathroom break. Feel your emotions and your stress and then learn to soothe yourself the way that you would soothe a child, for example. I know this sounds weird, but it really does help. Maybe give yourself a hug or give yourself a shoulder rub or tell yourself that everything is going to be all right. If none of these work and my emotions still feel a little high, sometimes I will just put on a sad song or a sad movie and kind of stir everything up and have a good cry. It really does help. It makes me feel so relieved afterwards. Another thing you can try is adding something to your day that makes you feel better, that is just for you. So what I used to do is come home after a really busy work day where I had no limits or boundaries in place and I felt completely drained plop down on the couch, watch Netflix and go to bed and basically do the same thing again the next day. So now I try to do one thing that I love. So I might go for a little walk, I might do some yoga, I might draw on my iPad or read a book or do some meditating, something that gives you a bit of energy and that reminds you that there are more things to life than just work and chores and recovering from those works and chores. And the last thing that really has saved me time and time again is having an adequate self-care practice. If you want to lead a more balanced life, I think that self-care will always be a big part of that. Engaging in a self-care activity has been proven to increase mental health, decrease stress, increase happiness, as well as deal with changes in life more easily and recover from setbacks more easily. So how do you make more time for self-care? Try and break it up into small bits here and there because self-care doesn't mean that you have to have two hours free for a whole like bubble bath, face mask routine. Of course, those things can be nice, but it can be found in the little moments here and there. So squeeze in a little mini break here or there or drink a lovely cup of tea while staring out the window for five minutes. Do some light stretches at your desk. Read 10 pages of a book that you love. You get what I mean. If possible, see if you can wake up a little bit earlier so that you can start your day without rushing, so that you can just enjoy your coffee or your breakfast without your phone slowly waking up. You can also discuss this with your partner if you have one and make a commitment that you're gonna help each other to get 15 minutes of self-care time every day. So one person could watch the kids while the other is doing a workout and then the other can watch the kids while the first one uh, is taking a nice, I don't know, relaxing shower or whatever. This can help build accountability and also it can just help in a practical way because you're helping each other and making sure that you both get that self-care time. If you feel like you could use some more help when it comes to self-care, I highly recommend checking out this video that I made earlier about the 10 different kinds of self-care to boost your health and happiness. These are physical, inspirational, mental self-care, your surroundings, explorational and restorative self-care, pampering, cathartic self-care, preparation and expression. So I will leave that video in the description box for you as well. In the end, what I try to do with my life is just feel it out. If things feel in balance, then great. If they're out of balance, I try to make little changes where I can. And even if things feel completely out of balance and I feel completely overwhelmed, I remind myself that even this is a totally natural part of life and that all I have to do is give it some time Focus on myself for a while and things will get better. I would love to hear from you on a scale of one to 10, how balanced you think your life currently is. So one, completely not balanced and 10, very, very balanced. Let me know down in the comments. I'm very curious. I would say my life right now feels like eight out of 10. 
Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare and get your one month free trial so you can try them out. It is so much fun. A link in the description box. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye bye.